Okay, class, now we're going to start on section two. So in section two, it talks about in the, uh, in the manual, it talks about removing the intake portion stuff. It talks about the intake manifold, but it's not really a manifold because there's only one cylinder. Anyways, we're going to get started with the two 10 millimeter nuts, and I'm going to crack both of them loose. And when you loosen both of them, then you can go ahead and remove. Okay, again, keeping in mind where the nuts and bolts go and come from. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this here and I got to be very careful because there's a lot of hoses and such attached to it so I got to be careful I don't break anything as I remove. Okay so when you remove the intake here you have to be careful of the placement of the carburetor settings. So what we have over here is a fuel switch on and off to allow fuel to enter into the carburetor from the fuel tank and we have the choke lever. Now we got to make sure the choke lever is in a position where there's a little bit larger opening in its, in, its, uh, in its guide and we'll have the carburetor fuel setting set to the on position. Okay, so you see here they're straight to the on position and there's a little bit larger notch here. Once we do that, both of my, my, my nuts are off, then I could slide it out away from the carburetor. Still being careful. Alright, so I got that there. You can see that's all been taken apart with the hose attached to it. It's got my wing nuts still on there. I'm going to leave them on there. Okay, place that off to the side. Okay. Now, the two nuts, what am I going to do with them? I am eventually going to be placing them back on my studs here, but before I go ahead and do that, in the, in the instructions, it talks about removing the carburetor. Before I remove the carburetor, you can see here there's some levers and springs attached to the carburetor, I have to remove that and there's the fuel line which is kind of just loosely there and we're going to take the fuel line with the carburetor. So we got these springs and levers which we have to remove. So what I got to do is I'm going to remove this spring just by simply pulling it off, being careful, I don't want to break anything and you see this lever here, I'm going to straighten out this bar and pull the lever right out. Okay. Now we're going to be removing the carburetor Okay, so let me get my, my two nuts off. We're going to place them back there in a few minutes. You have to take a mental note, or in some situation, you, it would even be a good idea to bring your cell phone with a camera, or have an actual digital camera, to take a picture in the order these brackets and gaskets come off, because a lot of students get these things confused. So you can see the way that this gasket is placed on here. Now I can take this gasket and just as easily put it on the wrong direction and the holes in the carburetor will no longer line up and the engine will not run right. So you got to keep an eye on how that comes off. Okay, take that off. I got my carburetor. Don't pull it, be gentle. Got the fuel lines coming with it. This green gasket stayed on there. And it looks like it doesn't want to come off. I'm not going to force it, I'm going to leave it be. Then we have this spacer and the purpose of this spacer is so that it can root the, um, the, the different lines, rubber hoses and such, and it acts as a preventative to keep the heat of the engine away from the carburetor. It's a, it's a plastic spacer, okay? So it isolates the heat of the engine, keeps it on the engine, it doesn't transfer it to the carburetor. The engine is mostly aluminum, the carburetor is aluminum, aluminum transfers heat really well. So we've got to remember the direction this goes on, it doesn't go on in the wrong direction, okay? And then we got a gasket there as well. We can leave that gasket there. It's not going to bother us where it is. Okay. So, take my nuts, place them on my studs, and I won't lose them. I know where they belong. Okay, students, now we're going to remove this bracket over here. And this bracket is the governor bracket. Okay. It has to do with the throttle, how fast the engine will run. So we're going to remove this bracket, and we're going to remove the spring from this bracket. This bracket here, guys, we're going to leave it be. We're not going to remove it. We're not going to be adjusting. This is, has to do with the governor. We're going to leave it just be. A couple of students in the past removed it, and then we did, they didn't put it back in the exact same position it was, and then the engine had a problem with its idle. It was either lighting too high or too low or, or, or vice versa. So to remove this bracket, we have a few bolts holding down in place, small little bolts here, and again, we're going to loosen and loosen all the hardware before I go ahead and remove one. Remove that bolt there. 
Okay, that'll move that off the way. It'll take my part off to the side there. Remove my other bolt. Now, these bolts here, if you place them in, in, a, in a bucket or whatnot, you might end up in a situation where you don't remember where it came from. This is why it's important to place it back. Now, you see this little piece of metal here? This piece of metal held the first hose we removed. So what we're gonna do with this piece of metal is with this bolt and this piece of metal, I'm gonna place it back into the engine like so. And there's no question later on as to where does this belong. Same thing with this bolt that we removed the bracket. We're gonna place it back into the, into the hole like so. So that no question later on as to where does this bolt belong? How come this hole here? What is it for? And so on and so forth. Okay. So again, we got the spring there. You can see where it's connected. Okay. And we simply remove it. Okay. So now I have this bracket. I have my one spacer, two spacers. Okay, guys. And I have these springs here as well. Now these springs, I don't want to leave these springs hanging around because this is going to get lost. So I'm going to remove my springs. Okay. And it's very important you, uh, you know where the position they go back in. You can, again, take a picture of it. You can refer back to this video and, uh, and to determine where everything goes. Okay, so now I have a lot of these little items here that could easily get lost and confused where they come from, where they go. So what we have in our classroom is a bunch of these resealable bags. These ones are a little small. We've got to get some bigger ones. But we can throw them in here, all our items, and uh, then we can have access to it later on. We can put this in our box. Okay, so we're going to place all our little items inside of this resealable bag. Close it up so we don't lose anything. And I'm going to take a piece of tape. And I wrote section 2 on my piece of tape because that's from section 2 in the, in the, uh, the instructions. But you can easily write carburetor, intake, spacers. You can write your group name on there. Whatever it takes for you to remember to organize. So there you go. I got my little bag here. And I'm going to place it with my other items. Uh, for reassembly later. Okay, the next item in section two, it talks about removing the cover, the pull start, as it was, okay? Now, the pull start, a lot of people make the mistake of removing these three bolts. Do not remove these three bolts. We are going to be removing the four perimeter bolts around this, this, uh, this item here. Before we do that, we have to consider this wiring here because there is a on and off switch. And this on and off switch, what it does, is it kills the spark plug, okay? So as the engine's running, you're gonna keep it in the on switch. If you wanna shut the engine off, the way to do it is to flip it to the off, the off position. Okay, that's how we do it. So we have to consider this. We're gonna have to disconnect this wiring. And again, be careful and try to determine as to how things go back together so that you can reposition things later on, okay? So we just got this that disconnected. We got this little ground wire here disconnected. Okay, are we disconnected by removing these bolts? And again, good question is, what do I do with these four bolts when I have the shroud removed? Well, pretty simple guys, I'm gonna put them back in the existing, once the shroud is removed, I'm gonna take this bolt and place it back into that same hole. So I know exactly where it comes from and later on I know exactly where it's supposed to go. There's no questions in my mind, there's no lost hardware, um, it's, a, it's a much easier, smoother transition of repairing. Okay guys, so we got the four bolts removed. Uh, we simply just remove the shroud, not very hard. I take my four bolts and I place them back inside the holes. Okay, very simple. There's the other hole there. And place it down there. And the last one down here. Okay, now, also what it asks you to do is to remove the ignition coil. And this is the ignition coil. Now, later when you go to install the ignition coil, you have to, so this is the flywheel and it rotates. The ignition coil does not rotate. But you can see here that they are extremely close together. So later on, when you put it back, we're gonna have to get it to that same position. It has to be a given distance away from the flywheel. The flywheel has this magnet on here. As you can see, this is easy to move. And as you can see, as I move it past this piece of metal, it wants to take it with it, that's a magnet. And the magnet has to pass 
the ignition coil in order for the ignition to work. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and loosen, loosen, and then remove the hardware. Now you can see these holes that I'm removing the, car, the, uh, the ignition coil from, it's an elongated hole, okay? And the purpose for that elongated hole is so that I can adjust the distance the coil is away from the flywheel. And that's an important adjustment, and you'll adjust that with your uh, instructor uh, during reassembly at the end of the project. Okay, I'll take my bolts, and I'm gonna place them back in the holes. You know, students who don't do this method, and I can't stress enough putting them back in the same hole, are left with putting long bolts in short holes and short bolts in really deep holes and wondering why things don't line up. Now, we have this wire in here. Should I just pull it? What do you think, class? Just give it a yank, see what happens? Absolutely not. So I'm going to follow this wire over the top of the engine, and I see that it connects to the original wiring there. So I'm just going to disconnect it, give it a little pull, and I'm going to examine how it's rooted because if I don't place it back in the original rooting it can get caught up into the spinning parts of the engine and then we can end up with some problems there later on okay so there's the ignition coil spark plug twist and pull at the same time ignition coil has been removed okay now in the instructions it talks about removing the metal shrouds here okay on the bottom half of the engine so it has some metal shrouds. And the purpose of the shrouding, guys, along with the original shrouding for the pull start, is as the flywheel rotates, it generates wind. Right? It's got this fan here. And that wind needs to be channeled around the engine to cool it off. And the shroud guides it in that direction. So we're going to remove the shroud down here. And there's a couple of bolts, really simple, same size. You can see I haven't changed my tool size. I'm going to loosen all the bolts first. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove all the bolts. And it's a really simple process. And we just want to get the shroud out of the way so we can access some larger hardware to remove the cylinder head later on in the piston and so on and so forth, all the fun stuff. Okay, so there's the shroud there. I'm going to place that back in there. Place this guy. The front again, there's another one here on this side, and that shroud has been removed, and there's another shroud on the other side, which obviously is pretty straightforward, I'm sure you guys have figured it out. Okay, class, that is the end of Section 2. Congratulations on uh, completing Section 2.